We're in a situation now where we need to be looking for alternative energy sources. Our global fossil fuel reserves are becoming depleted and it's likely that we'll reach peak extraction or peak oil as they call it sometime in, well, we may have reached it already. So sometime between the last 10 years and about 20 years in the future, there's a, there's a window there, but it's now in the broader terms. And so we really need to be looking for a new source and that source should be sustainable, renewable and environmentally friendly. When we burn biofuels, we release carbon dioxide into the air, but that carbon dioxide came out of the air a year or so ago. So it's just recycled. When we burn fossil fuels, we release CO2 into the atmosphere that was buried in the ground for millions, hundreds of millions of years. So there's a net increase in CO2 in the atmosphere. When you get that net increase in the CO2, of CO2 in the atmosphere, you get trapping of heat more effectively by the atmosphere. This causes everything that goes with climate change. What we want to do in biofuel net is to focus the production of biofuels on things that don't compete with food. That's an issue in the long run. Global food security is something we must be sensitive to. So we're looking at things like residues from agriculture, straw, corn stalks, waste products from forestry operations, purpose-grown grasses that are grown on poor land, land that's not really suitable for crop production, and the same thing with uh, plantation forestry. We're also looking at material that goes into dumps right now, organic matter that's part of the municipal solid waste that's filling up our dumps and causing problems there. Some of this research is already being done in Canada, but here and there across the country by researchers who are, to some extent at least, isolated from other researchers who could be working in areas that would be useful if they were, it just would be a useful situation if they were cross-informed. BiofuelNet is hosted at McGill University and is comprised of over 20 top Canadian universities in total. We also have over 80 of the best researchers in the country present. We have 40 industrial partners and almost a hundred other partners. So what this network is trying to do is to bring all of that together so all the people working on the larger problem by working on their specific problems will be talking to each other to know how a solution here will fit with a solution there to make the whole thing develop much more quickly. Every sector interested in fuel is with us in this. So we've got folks in there in agriculture and in forestry who are producing the biomass. We have industry involved that's their whole purpose is to produce the fuel and distribute it, handling and all of that. We have people there who are interested in the performance of engines running on it. So we have the automobile, major automobile manufacturing, the guys who make the engines. We have the aviation aerospace sector involved. Bringing together the collective skill sets of the researchers with the collective knowledge of the industry partners allows us to identify any bottlenecks that are constraining the development of the biofuel industry this time to address those bottlenecks and allow the full development of the industry as quickly as possible. The overall sustainability group is one we refer to by the acronym SEAS, which stands for Social, Economic and Environmental Sustainability. So we've got people in there looking at things like policy and potentially law that could relate to biofuels and making sure biofuels are carried out in a way that's environmentally friendly and sustainable in the long term. We've got people in there that are looking at the economics of it. We don't want to develop some process that really does the job and looks great, but costs more to produce the fuel and it could, results in fuel that's more expensive than ever could be used in the public sector. And we've got the environmental people there looking at things like how much greenhouse gas benefit is there really from using biofuels or this type of biofuel. By 2020, we want to have a major impact on fuel production and consumption in Canada. Given Canada's relatively small population and considerable biomass reserves, and if we exploit them carefully so that we do it in a long-term sustainable fashion, Canada could produce a substantial amount of its fluid fuels from biofuels and do so in a, in a manner that is economically viable and is consistent with environmental friendliness. This is what we really want to come out of this network in the long term.